Bonjour, mes amis! Bienvenue! Le call-up avec uh, mon ami Jillian Sakovitz. I'm Susanna Collins. That was my uh, dreadful French, but there's Keep a reason. Up. I was going to say, I don't know there's what you said reason. to me, but I like it. There's a reason. There's a reason that we are, are speaking French today on the call-up, and that is because we have a very special guest joining us who just happens to be from Paris, and that is Florian Velo of the New York Red Bulls. So we're going to catch up with him, and it's going to be a very fun chat. He's a he's a, an old friend of mine, shall we say. These two go they, way back. They go way back. On today's episode, you'll learn a little bit about Florian's journey from the good old country of France <sighs> to the beautiful state of New Jersey. Why 2020 <laughs> may be, no giggles, why 2020 <laughs> may be his breakout season. And why him and Susanna have a portrait together <laughs> from the from the cobblestone streets of Paris. Oh yes. boy. Yeah, that's, that's right. That and so much more on this episode of The Call Up. That is a, a story in and of itself. Let me tell you something. No, he's such a great guy. And I did a shoot with him um, last summer for BTW. And I literally, like, we haven't seen each other since then. And so it's like the last time I saw him, we were in Paris and gallivanting along these beautiful streets. Same thing, and, right? And now look at us. Yeah, exactly. Totally. My Brooklyn apartment is basically, basically Same Paris. Thing. Uh, well, I'm I'm super here for any any uh, feelings of being <gasps> on a nice exotic mm. foreign trip to Europe. So here for that and something else Same. here for Same. this Same. week. Uh, it was really nice to kind of. I think everyone in all of this is really valuing family and people in their lives. So it was really really sweet to see mm -hmm. all of the Mother's Day uh, posts that kind of rolled in for people's wives, mothers. Loved it. Special ladies and people in their lives um and on that note someone celebrating their first mother's day <gasps> with our superstar u.s women's national team love alex morgan Yay! alex morgan and servando carrasco of the la galaxy welcomed a baby girl on may 7th little charlie elena and she posted a picture of her sweet little babe on Instagram. And oh my goodness. Is it, I mean, this child, let's just be honest, is pedigree. I mean, genetically blessed. Like both Alex looks. and Servando, like it looks, talent, <sighs> athletic ability, all of it. I mean, so this this is going to be, I'm just looking at the future of the US women's national team. Can she I not think. be, can baby Charlie not be a soccer player? I, there's no, there's no, no way we need little baby Charlie to, to be a, a superstar. And they got to um, pump out like field. they, and we need our yeah, little baby Charlie there. will play on the women's national team, but they got to pump out like eight, eight babies for the Keep men's going. team. No offense. Keep going. <laughs> also congrats to Pablo Ruiz of Real Salt Lake because he <laughs> has trained his dog to honestly, this reminded me, uh, this also was kind of old school. Cause I was like, this could have been on America's funniest home videos. He literally is heading the ball back and forth with his dog. Like I can't even get June the cat to get off the <laughs> table. Well, cats are a little bit they they have a mind of their own, you know. Dogs are a little bit easier to train, but but Pablo has literally trained his dog to do keepy ups with him. And he was like heading the ball. It, was a, it looked like a little French bulldog and he was just like they were doing this super back cash and forth exchange. It was adorable. So they That he, was on Twitter for anyone that. who wants to watch yeah, it. Yeah, if you go to um MLS posted it, and then I think this was on one of his uh, his Instagram story. But it was it was adorable, and I probably watched it like five times because I was like, "This is this is the content I need right now." Thank it's you very much. For those of you that don't know what the EMLS tournament special is, it's pretty cool. They have an actual MLS player teamed up with the EMLS player, and they go head to head in FIFA against another team. Yeah, so it's so cool that like Dio. And their e EMLS player and Chicharito and their e EMLS player are getting to like battle each other. And it, it gets really good. And the uh, first, there's four sections. The fourth one finally happened this past weekend. And of course they had Atlanta against Orlando. And I, I know they? I am the Atlanta United sideline reporter. So like I, I'm a little partial, but Atlanta has like, you know, they've kind of dominated the series against Orlando. And then Franco Escobar and Paulo Neto, they beat Nani. And co. And that was just like, I don't know. I was kind of loving the shadiness. I was loving the competition level. 
And now the championship round comes this Sunday. That's May 17th. That's going to be on FS1, Fox Deportes, and TSN this Sunday. So it's been really fun to watch. It's not it's not quite soccer, but it's as close as we can get. It's as close as we can get, and we'll take whatever we can get at this Damn point. Straight. But yeah, they did they did some very good strategizing <laughs> when they built out these brackets and just happened to put some oh rivals uh, playing against right off the top there. right off the top. Uh, but very very well played EMLS. It's been a lot of fun. So if you guys haven't been watching that, that's a that's one way to kind of scratch that soccer itch so there you go <sighs> um, uh, real quick before i have a disappointing thing oh, to tell no. you though oh no tell me what's going on i've been all team sweatpants since um probably yes. march 8th yes same. i don't know if anyone cares about this listening but i kind of want to know what people are doing i put a pair of jeans on over the weekend <gasps> no and i thought Not about more. all the people i was letting no. down like from our MLS offices, Katie Carrillo, I know I was letting her down because we've really been team no buttons. Yeah. Um, but there was a part of it. It felt good, but then it also felt bad. Oh, if you know oh, what I mean. I'm, see, no, no. I you haven't done it? No. And I'm also scared because yeah, I, while, I, while I have been trying to exercise when I can, I just, you know, you don't feel like the, the after the workout, just, it's just, it isn't the same. And so I am very afraid because jeans are not forgiving. Denim is not a forgiving fabric. It wasn't and I a good know experience. But it's going to be a very good gauge as to where I am in terms of my fitness level as soon as I put those bad boys on. And it's not something that I'm ready to face right now, emotionally, mentally. I can't do it. I'm sticking to the sweatpants. I applaud you. I think that. Don't worry. <laughs> I, 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 you got, it's you got gone. it out of the way. You got it back in the sweats. Good back job. in the sweats. That's I'm, my girl. I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep the morale high team, in my team house. Team elastic you know? waist. Team elastic waist. Keep yes, it going. Team no buttons. Guys, uh, tell us what you're doing. Like, Ugh. does putting the jeans on help you? Does it make you feel, you know, there are some people like mm -hmm. they have their routine. Like they're still, I, no. I'm not, but they're still like showering every morning and like putting on their clothes for work. I read some super obnoxious article. I don't remember if it was the LA times, or the Washington post about how like, there's no excuse. You should still be getting ready for work. And then, you know what? You don't have 80,000 wires running across your house right now. We had Jeff Fatinella and Zarek Valentin on last week, and we talked about Jeff's book series. Um, One hit very close to your heart. Yes, exactly. So the, it had to be told series. And look what came in the mail. For those of you that are oh, listening, Jeff look Attenella, at those illustrations. Jeff Attenella sent me, he sent me two copies of the one about the Cubs called the curse ends. And then he sent me the one about Cleveland that says, uh, called Cleveland wins a championship. And I, these came in the mail and I am so excited. I cannot thank you enough, Jeff, because I'm going to give one of these to my father. And it was just so, so sweet, sweet because we had talked about it and, you know, he was like, I'll send you one. And I was he's like, he's one of the okay. nicest when I, we tend to get the nice guys on our pod, but he's one of the I nicest know. guys in the league. But PS Jeff, what do you think? I don't read. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. Jeff and I can take a piss out of each other. Uh, um, no, but Suzanne and her dad have a so very, sweet. very special bond with the Chicago Cubs. We and do. Um, we do. You'll we hold on to these it. books and these will these will go down, we'll down your family on lines. On yes. To generations. So thank yeah. you so much, Jeff Asinella. Very sweet. I, I really, really appreciate it. That was lovely. Okay. Um, let's move it along to call up cares yeah, shall we we? because this is a, a little segment that we like to do every week just kind of highlighting some of the good things that that people and our clubs are doing and this week we're going to focus on the new york red bulls and specifically their head coach chris armis mm -hmm. so last week was national nurses day and i did not know this about him but his wife justine is a nurse and he wrote a letter to his wife that he then read and posted it on Twitter. And it was one of the sweetest, most heartfelt things I've I've ever seen. It was so, so beautiful. And I just love the fact that he took the time and effort to, to put that out there, to give her some love because she's been working like crazy. And it just, I don't know, it just really, really warmed my heart, Jill. You've always been an amazing nurse because you care so much about your patients and you always put them first, but it's been incredible, so impressive to see you nervously leave home, go to work, come home mentally and physically exhausted, all because you worked so hard with compassion, courage, and the highest level of commitment to the job and to the people. 
Chris Armas, thank you for writing that and even more. Justine, thank you for everything that you're doing. So on that note, should we get to our guest? We should. Well, right now we are so excited to bring in our guest for the day. We have midfielder for the New York Red Bulls, Florian Velo. And Flo, I haven't seen you. The last time that you and I chatted, we were in Paris. We had just taken in a World Cup match. And now, one Cash. year later, we are we are here <laughs> in quarantine. So it's a quite a quite a lot has happened during that time. But it's great to see you again. How are you doing? What's life like for you right now? I'm doing good, honestly. Uh, it's been uh, kind of the same routine every day, trying to stay fit. Uh, hopeful that we can get back out there uh, soon once the governor let us. Uh, back to the facility, but I've been good. Been in good company with my dog, so so far so good. I'm so glad you brought up Simba, who is yeah. so adorable and is a makes frequent appearances on your Instagram, but he also has his own Instagram account, Lil Simba. How is Simba doing so and and what, what does he like having you around all the time? What's this like? Uh, he's been good. He's super <laughs> needy, you know, like when you're home all the time, he always wants to play, he wants to go out. He needs attention. Uh, he cries a lot, like he's demanding a lot. So it can be <laughs> frustrating at times, you know, but he's been good. It's, it really, I'm really lucky to have it. It's it's nice to have somebody or someone like, like even a dog, like just to, to keep your company. I wish I had a fur baby. Jill has a little cat, June, that makes appearances on the podcast every now and again. And I'm, times, yeah. I'm so jealous. I just want something to cuddle, just something to make me feel better. Fun, fun fact. <laughs> There's actually in the tri-state area been a shortage of animal availability. <gasps> yes, like people wanting dogs right now from shelters. Aww. It's good news um, is like surging. Like I knew a woman who's wanted a dog. And, you know, usually you would just go on a Sunday to the animal shelter, pick out a puppy. She's had to wait like weeks because ev who doesn't want a puppy? Everyone's stuck inside. I want a puppy. So that's, basically you're telling me fair. I'm screwed. No dogs available. You, you have more time to just train him. So that's the right time <sighs> to get it. Dang it, you guys. Stop it. You're making I'm having puppy envy right now. Oh, Florian, I know you said you guys are waiting. Obviously, you part of the New York Red Bulls. It depends on what the New Jersey uh, mandates and protocol is going to be. But while you're waiting, you've been posting some videos of drills you've been doing in your garage. Uh, what do the neighbors think? Do they know <laughs> that you're a professional soccer player and that you're just doing your job? Has anyone yelled out the window? No, honestly, nobody... Nobody says anything like uh, there's a lot of space because it's a brand new building. So there's not much, not many cars. Uh, I met the owner once, I think. He has like the two, there's two Porsche next to the wall a train. So I really mm -hmm. have to be careful not hitting them. Yeah. But so far, so good. <laughs> Just don't hit the Porsche. Don't dent the Porsche. Whatever yeah. you do, Florian. No. That's good. It's a good, it's a good workout. You know, like you, you have to stay focused and concentrate so that you don't hit the car. So it's good. Okay. I'm glad you're being careful. Uh, well, for those of you listening and for those of you that don't know, Florian was uh, born and raised in France and then came on over to the United States for university, played at Ryder University, and then got involved with the, the Red Bulls. And now you are here. So can you just kind of give us a, a quick snapshot about your journey from from France and playing there to where you are now. Okay, so I kind of started. I started soccer really young. I was six, and I entered the academy, the PSG academy, when I was fourteen. From fourteen to Jill's repping. <laughs> I almost put mine as well, but it was not going to be good. <laughs> Red Bulls are like no, 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 no. Um, and then I stayed there for two and a half years. And then after that, I got recruited by Monaco for three years. I went there for three years. Um, and I got out, didn't didn't have the opportunity to sign a, my first professional contract. And I was offered a scholarship to go and study and play in the U.S. So this is how I ended up in the U.S. Uh, graduated in two years. And then right after I graduated, I signed with the second team. Did two years with the second team and then got my shot with the first team. And since then, it's been 
ups and downs, maybe more downs than ups, but it's been, it's been good so far. <laughs> yeah. What was your initial reaction when you thought, okay, I'm, I've spent time with the PSG Academy. I've spent time in Monaco and I am going to go take my talents to New Jersey. What was Ooh. your thought? What did you know about the state of New Jersey coming from France? Did you know what to expect? No, you don't really know how the system works. You don't know. Like I didn't know. I, I, I had traveled to New York once before, but never went to New Jersey. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how big was school. I, know, I didn't know anything. And I really love to travel and try new adventures. So it was like kind of like exciting. Um, and then going through PSG in Monaco, I was like really formed really well. Like I had the basics and, and I kind of was ready just to play. I would just wanted to play soccer and, and study at the same time. So this was the best, the best setup for me. Had you, you watched The Sopranos before you came to New Jersey? <laughs> the what? The Sopranos. No, what is that? It's a TV show. You should start it. I watched the whole thing during quarantine. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be the best representation. Yeah, of, but now he knows, he knows New Jersey, so he won't be scared. It's basically a bun- about a bunch of gangsters in New Jersey, um, not too far from Newark. So that's just why <laughs> I thought about it. Great. Yes. <laughs> you got to watch very- The Sopranos now. You'll feel very safe. Surprise. Wait, Flo, okay. you casually you casually dropped in that you graduated in two years for you. So yeah, you got- because yeah, because uh, when I was in Monaco, I was also studying, and I uh, I got an associate degree over there in two years. So I was able to transfer mm-hmm. my credit. Uh huh. Finish my uh, bachelor in two years. What, what was your you- bachelor's? Yeah. In? My bachelor is in business administration. Something something crazy. Fancy. <laughs> He's got the smarts, got the smarts. Um, uh, Flo, how are how are your family doing back in France? I had, I for those of you that don't know, Florian and I did a shoot together last year, and I got to actually go to his house and meet his his family and see his like childhood bedroom and all of that. And they were just so, so you just dropped so that sweet. in there so casually. I know exactly. Well, Flo and I go way back. I just want everybody to know that we're you know basically best friends. And uh, but they were so so nice. So how how are they doing? And you know during this very weird sort of time mm-hmm. for everybody. Uh, it's been good. Like today is the first day where it kind of like locked down. It's pretty much over everywhere in France besides Paris because uh, it's the most like it's the most concerning area so far so they're still a bit stuck inside with limited rules though but they've been together for two months uh, my brother my brother went back to the to the house so they've been all four together uh, it's been good so far they haven't killed each other yet uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they're working from home so they've been pretty busy during the week uh, trying to uh, stay busy during the weekend just family dinners or try to play games or watch movies together i don't know how much what do you miss most about being home right now family dinners yeah it's the best time like we just always eat together have fun just talk about what we're doing just throw jokes and, and it's always i love it the stereotype is that the French really know how to cook. Are Ooh. you a cook, Florian? Uh, I like to cook. I don't know. I can't consider myself French a food cook. or what? I, what food? Everything. I, lo- I love baking. I have a bad sweet tooth. Yeah, but... you're very you French. Made, you made some cookies I love it. the other day that looked really darn good that you posted this on Instagram. Yeah, this is bad. This is really bad. Like it's no, twice, <laughs> not twice, bad. Twice a week, twice a week minimum. But I, lo- I really love to cook. Enjoy to cook. My mom's just an amazing cook. Um, I grew up like she was always cooking, going to work and coming back and cooking for us. So we kind of learned. My grandparents just—it's amazing what they do with the little they have, and you learn from here and there. And I just love to cook. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, have you made escargot? yet have you attempted <laughs> no, can you can no, you procure no. snails in in quarantine is that a thing Suze, that's such a could. stereotype uh, i yeah, have, we have them I'm and just they, were, they were i'm so just joking good. it was so good it's good it, it, 
if if you make the sauce right with oh. the butter and, and the herbs, oh, and then you dip a- the bread in there and you soak it up. Yeah. Oh my god! I literally my mouth is watering right now. I'm it's just joking. Air. I know, I know, but I'm saying oh. to myself, we have our first French get- guest on, and you're asking him if he's made escargot yet. <laughs> you know, I'm basic. I'm I'm very I basic. Wish, I wish I I wish I knew uh, how to do it. I'll learn for sure uh, someday, but right now I'm just sticking to the basics. <laughs> We have to ask, cooking sounds like one of them, but it's been a pretty <laughs> unique time over the last two months. We've we really missed soccer, but in the absence of soccer, we've seen that some guys have hidden talents. Um, Andrew Farrell is an excellent piano player, plays <laughs> with the New England Revolution. Suze, you know better than I do what some yeah. of these guys can do. Um, Mateus Hosetu from Atlanta United plays the guitar beautifully. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no hidden talents, but we have to ask you, do you have any hidden talents? Uh, no, really. I like I hear to cook. You. I like to draw as well. But that's a good that's, one. Uh, draw. Hidden talent. Yeah. I kind of, one of my, um, one of my wall art is one of mine here. So during quarantine, made during quarantine. So try to stay See? busy. It's just been fun. Well, you can be a contestant on MLS Idol, which is another show that uh, I've been hosting I'm during this. Like, we'll we'll, we'll get you on there. I'll I'll push the votes towards <laughs> towards you, Flo. <laughs> Let the world see it. Um, one of the things that we want to talk to you about this is you mentioned it. You know, just kind of the uh, the sort of up and down journey that you have been on the last the last few years and. There is a word that you keep using to describe yourself, which is patient, because you have, I mean, just displayed so much patience with the injuries that you've been dealt. The torn ACL in 2018, you suffer another torn ACL last year. You do all this rehab. You come back. 2020 preseason, you're flying. I mean, Chris Armas literally said that having you back, it was almost like getting a new signing because of what you brought to the team. And then all of a sudden the season gets suspended. And so yet again, you're in this space where you have to remain patient just as you are ready to kind of embark on what could have been a breakout season for you. How do you maintain patience, Flo? Tell us. Uh, first of all, I'm not a really patient guy. <laughs> uh, before, before I got hurt, I was I always wanted things done the right way and then fast, fast as possible and get everything done right. Uh, I had to learn to be patient because when you get hurt like this, uh, not once but twice, you have to learn how to just pace it the right way. And then, and I think mentally over the last two years, I was pre- prepared to face that kind of like situation right now. It's mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it sucks to stay to, to get stuck. And but again, I, I wonder if I, I shouldn't be retiring, you know, because I, <laughs> three years I haven't been playing that much. So, but no, it, it's just fun and all the work, all the work you put in uh, with the results I had with the beginning of this year is just so rewarding. And I just yeah. want to keep working and stay fit and just be ready to get back at it because I just love what I do and this is kind of all my life. So you have to be patient. One or two more weeks, it will be fine. Eh. How's the knee? How's everything feeling now? You know, you had a great preseason and, you know, people were saying you're poised to probably have your breakout season in in 2020. Are you feeling 100%? I am. I think uh, the break kind of like helped me uh, heal a bit better as well because the beginning of the season was kind of preseason and beginning of the season was kind of like intense. Mm-hmm. Uh, running on concrete right now because well before because all the parks and, and, and fields were closed was not the ideal uh, I had like some a little bit of pain but so far my body feels really good I take like every every time that I have I just I try to stretch and do yoga I do everything just to keep my body in, in, in a good shape what has the mess go ahead Zeus. oh no go ahead Joel what has the messaging been from the New York Red Bulls? Because now we've, for over a week, have been watching other teams in other states where there's less restrictions and less coronavirus outbreaks like Georgia, Texas. We've watched those teams be able to resume um, 
training as long as you know you're keeping distant and everything like that what's the latest that the red bulls have have told the team well they're ready they have a protocol in place uh they're just waiting for the governor to uh, approve it there's nothing we can do new york and new jersey are really maybe the two worst states in the u.s that are impacted by the virus so again we have to be patient the health is more important than anything else um so we'll see. We'll see what happens in the next few weeks. Do you feel like because you have had this kind of this time away from actually playing, and I know you got a sniff of it in in preseason at the beginning of the season this year, but do you feel like you have a, a renewed sense of appreciation for the game that maybe, you know, just kind of multiplied even the love that you had for it before? Uh, I always had it i think i got it got even more powerful after my first injury after i got back and after the second one it was like wow i love it like it's just i'm just so lucky to wake up every morning and go to work and work is just playing playing soccer um there's nothing better in the world People would say maybe it's an easy job but no there's a lot of work to put into it there's a lot of uh, sacrifice as well but it's just the reward that we get from it. It's just amazing. Well, one day soon, we'll be back to watching soccer. You'll be back to playing soccer, <laughs> hopefully sooner than later. And one game we all look forward to. It's bound to look a little bit different in 2020, but that's part of Heineken Rivalry Weeks, um, the New York Derby. Um, I covered that game last year for FS1. Uh, it was a wild wild match the new york derby at red bull arena um what is it like playing in the in those games uh i was i only participated in one therapy uh I, my first acl injury uh, happened four days before the new york derby at the uh, yankee stadium so but I was fortunate enough to play uh, before that at Red Bull Arena when we won 4-0. And it was just, it was unbelievable, the atmosphere and everything. And it's my favorite game so far because um, my parents were in the stadium. Oh, we nice. won the game 4-0 and I scored a goal. So it's just, it was just yeah. a perfect game, perfect day. So, yeah, I, I love those games. It's always intense. There's always a lot of competition. It's you need the results, and and I think I really enjoy playing under pressure. Yeah, it's become a legitimate rivalry. You know, like it's over so the fun. over over the past few years, and it can. I mean, just from from covering those matches, like the two fan bases don't like each other. Like, do you so? And and that that is translated. Uh, it's so New York. Like, it's so it's so very very. New York, <laughs> Phil. It's absolutely right. But like, do you find that? I mean, like, do you guys as a team feel that kind of like? I don't. I don't want to say hatred, but like that sense of rivalry. Like, do you really like get a little bit more geared up for those matches against NYCFC? Yeah, of course, of course. It's so important. Like, it's important to win those games and make a statement that. The Red Bulls are the best team in in, in this area. Uh, when I was hurt, I always I always attended those games at the Yankee Stadium as well as the yeah. Red Bull Arena. And you you can feel even in the stands that tension between the two teams and the two supporters. So it, it, it's it's fun. It's really fun. If one if quarantine has taught me anything, I know for some of us we've been watching The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan documentary. It ignites that I want teams who hate each other. You know, like that doesn't exist really anymore. Like the idea, the way that the Pistons and the Bulls used to hate each other. Oh, so man. I feel like we've got a little titch of that with the two New York teams. It's it's still alive a little bit. Good. We need I it. hope it's going to keep growing that way. <laughs> I think uh, over the years, it became more and more intense. And there's only one outcome in the future. It's going to be even more powerful. So let's hope it, it, it goes that way. Yeah, we want to see you uh, being a big part in those matches too, Flo. It's about darn time that we get to get 2020. to watch you. 2020. 2020 is your year, I'm telling you. Okay, we're going to we're gonna take a little trip down memory lane back to June 
of of last year and probably I mean what was I'm sure the best couple days of your life spending <laughs> spending time with me. <laughs> it was actually really fun. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you said uh, that. After no, after after the shoot, <laughs> I was like I was not expecting to be that cool. Like I was like we did so many nice things and and we like the crew all. was amazing. The crew was amazing. Like we had a nice weather. It was just everything. It was, was. Perfect. it literally was. So we it was a shoot for my show BTW and we went to Paris. Flo kind of was our tour guide around <laughs> Paris. And then we went to um a World Cup match. The USA played played Chile. And uh, he was so could not have been a better host. It, but we we went sightseeing. We saw, I mean, like Eiffel Tower, Arc de Triomphe. We had a amazing dinner, went to his house. I, it was just, it was incredible. But what were, what are some of the, um, the memories that stand out to you about, about that shoot flow? Cause I've got mine. Uh, there is, I think we probably have the same on this <laughs> one, but there's probably, there's one more. Oh, I had it in the back of my mind. Well, there's obviously the game. Uh, that we went to watch uh, USA yeah. versus Chile was just unreal. There's a second one when we were work, uh, we were walking around the Parc des Princes and somebody shouted, "Oh, this is Flo!" And I'm like, "What?" And I turn around and this is those Red Bull fans. I'm like, "How is this possible? Like, it what was are the so chances?" Awesome. And it was so funny. So we chatted a little bit, took a picture, and the last one was uh, we were at uh, Montmartre. Uh, and then you have those uh, students <laughs> that just paint, like, uh, draw portraits of you. And we did one with uh, Susanna, and it was pretty funny. It was funny. <laughs> it turned so, out to be pretty funny. So this is the uh, – I have a screenshot of this. I have this this picture. There it is for those of you. So basically – Where, where is the real one now? So it's in my, it's in my closet. Um, okay. And no, so it's I, hanging I on her wall in her, in her house. That's, <laughs> I haven't, I wanted to get, I want to get it framed and I have not gotten it framed yet. And so it's still like rolled up. Um, but Flo and I went and got our like portraits done and Cute. this got this, it went, yeah, you know, it was like, we were kind of having this like quintessential Parisian day. And so we sit down and I did, I, I sat down first and the guy is drawing me and I'm watching Flo's reaction to watching the artist. And I was like, this can't be good. <laughs> this cannot be good. Why? What and was then, the face like? Well, it was kind of like his eyes would get really big. And then it was like a little bit of confusion. And then he would just start <laughs> laughing hysterically. And I was like, oh my God, what is this guy doing? So then it's Flo's well, turn. I had to, to sell it a little bit. Oh, you, I mean, I was panicking. And then for those of you that can't see, basically here it is. So I am wearing like a cocktail, like some like really. You tight. mean you didn't have that on in in, no, in the neighborhood? No, sure did not. Sure did not. And um, I'm I'm holding a microphone. I happen to be wearing soccer cleats as well as you do. And then Florian's there holding a glass of champagne. And but let's just say we had to have the artist um, adjust a few things to make it a little more family friendly because there was uh -oh. some. There was some questionable hand placement. <laughs> just leave it. That artist was just I taking bet. liberties, huh? Completely. Oh, yeah. Completely. Unacceptable. <laughs> Completely. It was it was wild. It was one of the funniest things, but I could not stop laughing. And Florian was just, I mean, you you were such a good sport. And I was like, I can't believe we're putting him through this right now. He's never gonna want to do another shoot with MLS ever again. <laughs> And here he is. And here he is a year later talking about it. Oh, well, so very cool fun. that you two got to experience the Women's World Cup. Um, I'm living vicariously through you. And I'll be honest right now, I'll take I'll take anyone's recount of walking through Paris. It was pretty it was pretty spectacular. I would uh, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I don't know if Flo would. What do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. It was just the <laughs> perfect combination of like like visiting Paris and attending <gasps> like a, a World Cup soccer tournament. It was just, it was just perfect. Scale of one to 10. And Susanna put this question in here. I wouldn't even ask okay. it. Scale of one to 10, how 10 being the most embarrassing one being 
a, a Parisian. She fits right in. Uh, how embarrassing of an American was Susanna? I saw footage <laughs> of her. What were you doing? You were like balleting across the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, it just kind of the moment just sort of struck Took me. Took over you. Know? you. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I One don't to know. ten. So what is it? Ten. Ten's ten. like fanny pack, ten embarrassing. Yeah, like she wants French fries. Cold. Uh, yes. cheeseburgers, embarrassing American. One, one like no, no one would say, even know. Uh, I would say two. <sighs> a two. Yeah, because she <laughs> she kind of like she puts you in that situation. She makes you comfortable enough so like you just like you go with it as well. So it was just like oh. it was like supernatural. That's why, uh, that's why I really enjoy the, the shoot. That's why I said after that, I was not expecting to be that fun because it was just natural. It was like just friends just going out in Paris and just watching soccer and filming it. You know, that's, it was. It literally that was. That's beautiful. Well, Florian, um, I know the season 2020 season started out so well for you. And I can only I can only believe that once it does start up again, we're going to see great things from you out on the pitch. We're pumped. And I cannot wait because nobody deserves it more. You've worked so hard and we're just keeping our fingers crossed that it's sooner rather than later for you. So well done. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. It's, it's great to see you. I'm, I, we, I can't believe it's been, it took us, you know, in quarantine to finally uh, see each reconnect. other again to reconnect. So yeah. <laughs> it won't be well, a year. At least we, 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 we found time to just talk and then and, and just catch up. But yeah. Exactly. It was, uh, it's been a year. It's been a year. It's been a year. Well, we won't go that long ever again. We're going to see you back out on the field soon. I know it. Oh, so great to catch up with Florian. Um, he's such a... Merci. Such, such a nice guy. Merci beaucoup, Florian. Valo. Um, <laughs> it won't be a year again before... I see him and maybe it probably won't be in Paris, but at least it might not be in this quarantine situation. So next time we have on Florian, <gasps> we're making snails. Ex oh God, listen, my I won't have it any other way. I'm salivating the garlic butter sauce, Jill. I just, I can't even, oh, I believe you. I don't, I don't think I tried them the oh, time I was there. Oh, so good. So, so good. I'm craving it. Well, we've got, we've, uh, once again, we have quite a busy week lined up for everybody. Um, we have our MLS Unites initiative in this week, MLS Unites for Creativity. Mm. And this is a perfect way for us to promote MLS Idol, which is on Thursday evenings at 7.30 p.m. on MLS's Facebook and Twitter, because what's more creative than music and the arts and, and showcasing these talents? So we're discovering all the hidden talents of MLS players. It has been such a blast and so fun to see these guys kind of outside of the soccer realm and, and what they what they like to do and what makes them tick. We had Steph Fry making beautiful artwork last week. Andrew Farrell, Andrew Farrell pulled at my heartstrings piano. with his medley. I it must was say, for those of you that missed it go back and listen like some cold play yes on its keyboard it was just so good oh, so so good so that's uh we've got that to look forward to on thursday what else do we have jill uh all, all every thursday and monday extra time uh so get on that extra time twitter our podcast bros and vote for the greatest team of all time bracket. Oh my god! I guess I just got stressed out thinking that's about gonna get that. spicy yeah no we Woo! don't we don't bring any stress here on the call up and in our in our virtual quarantine world, it's Heineken Rivalry Week. Hey, one of our favorite weeks of the year. An MLS classic <laughs> from a rivalry matchup is going to air each day on YouTube and Facebook at four o'clock Eastern Time, one Pacific. Friday's MLS Classic Remix is going to be one of my favorites. Oh, always Seattle, good. Portland, but an awesome spin fan edition. So they're going to be yeah. watching it um, with a couple fans. So that's going to make it extra spicy. Um, some of our favorite moments from the Cascadia Cup rivalry with two diehard supporters. And that one's going to be hosted by David Goss and Kaylin Carr, one of many to come up. So keep your eyes open for that. So much fun. And uh, can't say who, but I think we have, I think we've got a top notch guest lined up for next week. So keep your eyes open for that. Fingers and, um, crossed. Fingers yeah. crossed. Oh, well, this is so. So much fun and a huge thanks again to Florian for, for joining us and transporting us back to uh, Paris. Yeah, Paris for just a, for just a, a, a wee, a wee bit escape the, the doldrums of my lovely soccer football. and MLS is getting closer and closer to coming back. The Bundesliga starting play. Um, 
So everything is heading in the right direction, people, and we are going to keep you updated. And we're moving in the right we're, direction. We're in this together. So we are. We are indeed. So guys, continue to to be safe. And thank you so much for for tuning in. Enjoy your week. And guess what? We'll see you see soon you next week. <laughs> <laughs>